Ultrasounds can tell expectant parents a lot, how big the baby is, how the pregnancy is progressing, whether it's a boy or a girl. But now researchers say a new test has been developed that would reveal the entire genetic blueprint of a fetus still in its mother's womb. It's done by taking a blood test from the mother and a saliva test from the father. Existing tests like the amniocentesis can detect chromosome abnormalities like Down syndrome. But this new breakthrough testing can detect more than 3,000 diseases, highlighting genetic mutations in a baby's genome code, such as if a child is predisposed to cancer. If you think of the genome as a book and uh, a normal person uh, has two copies of every chapter uh, or a healthy person, um, uh, detecting Down syndrome uh, with this sort of approach is akin to trying to determine whether there's an extra copy of an entire chapter, uh, whereas uh, what, we, what we've tried to do is to enable the technology to even pick up uh, typos in, in single words on a single page. Jay Shenderay, an associate professor of genome sciences at the University of Washington, heads up the research team developing the new procedure, which if in use now would be costly. Shenderay says as much as $50,000 for a single test. And it raises a host of ethical questions. Will it lead to positive selection? Parents seeking certain traits in their unborn babies? The National Right to Life Committee is disturbed by this new direction in science. Life does begin at conception and the, the only question is whether or not that life is worthy of protection. And the answer is those lives should not be killed and dismembered for any reason and certainly not because that they're disabled. Some of the mutations are definitive, that is a child will be born with a disability. But other mutations are less certain. The genome map indicates only that a fetus has a greater likelihood of developing a disorder. This kind of test that is described in this story where there are hundreds of thousands of genetic mutations, it's unclear whether or not any of them or some of them will have clinical or medical indications. But researchers like Shindere say the implications are immense. If doctors know ahead of time a child will develop a certain medical condition, it can lead to early intervention. You can imagine scenarios in which this sort of uh, thing is abused. I, I think it's certainly important to, to worry and think about those ethical challenges that, that might arise, um, but we may be putting uh, the, the cart a little bit ahead of the horse here. And you can read more in the journal Science Translational Medicine. The cost of genetic sequencing has come down tremendously in the last several years. So this kind of stuff that used to be more in the realm of science fiction is becoming more and more a reality. Lisa Sylvester, CNN, Washington. All right, a look into the future. Researchers now say they can create a genetic blueprint of a fetus just from the saliva of the father and a blood sample from the pregnant mom. I want to bring in uh, Robert Glitzman. He's a bioethicist at Columbia University. Good to see you, an author of the book, Am I My Genes? Professor Glitzman, uh, what kinds of questions does this raise for you? It raises all kinds of questions because on the one hand, this technology can enable us to eliminate some very serious diseases like Down syndrome and even diseases that can kill a child. But there get to be difficulties because we all have mutations in us for about six diseases that may or may not occur based on other things in the environment. And so we may find that a child has a mutation that will give him or her deafness. And some parents may say, I don't want to have a deaf child. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, as I describe in the book, Am I My Genes? A lot of genetic information is not going to be black and white, but more like predicting the weather. We'll be able to say a child has a 50% chance of developing breast cancer. The fetus has a 20% chance of developing autism. And some parents may say yes, some say no. And so we need to start thinking about uh, these issues and educating ourselves to know what to do. Well, you made a giant leap there. You said potentially eliminating something like Down syndrome. Is it eliminate Down syndrome or what it is, is it equips people to know whether there's a predisposition for Down syndrome or any of the other things that you just mentioned? No, that's a great question. So we have a choice. What we'll be able to do is look by just getting a little blood stick from the mother, just like when you go to the doctor's office, nothing invasive, uh, and a little saliva from the father. They'll be able to say uh, that your child uh, will develop Down syndrome. Uh, some parents may say, okay, I'm willing to live with that. That's what God gives me. Other parents may say, you know, I have a child with Down syndrome now. It's too hard for me. I don't want to have another child like that. And they may say, you know, I don't want to have that child. And they may terminate the pregnancy. Uh, and again, uh, parents may decide, okay, I'm going to be prepared, or they may decide, no, that's something I don't want. And there's a slippery slope. 
Some parents may say, you know, I don't want to have a boy baby. I don't want to, or I don't want to have a girl, or I don't want to have if, as we develop tests, for instance, for homosexuality, um, there may be genetic tests that we develop for that. Some parents may say, I don't want to have a gay child. And again, these are larger social questions that we all need to start thinking about. Uh, and uh, there's also issues about false paternity. If we get this saliva from the father, in about 3% of cases, we'll find that that father is not really the father of that fetus, no uh, of that child. And then oh. that's a whole other set of issues of how we deal with that. Okay, then, you know, here's another question. Then I wonder, you know, has our public policy held up to these rapid developments in genetics? Right. Well, as we go forward, our understanding of genetics is going like this. Literally every week there is discovery of other markers uh, and there are questions. They could, there is a, a, a Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, but this technology will give parents information about their own genes and that could lead to discrimination potentially for life insurance or disability insurance. And there's also the question that in Europe, these technologies are heavily regulated and they're not in the United States. Here in the United mm -hmm. States, if doctors want to do it, mm -hmm. patients want to do it, uh, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine self-regulates itself. Mm. But many people say that given the case of Octomom a few years ago, for mm -hmm. instance, and now this technology, that we as a society should begin to think and maybe have policymakers or others say there's certain things that we should not allow and certain mm -hmm. things that are okay to allow. Uh, and so we, as we go forward, uh, we as a society need to think about this. Uh, there may be room for policy and we need to begin to think, as we just heard, many people are against regulations, mm -hmm. but other people may say, no, we shouldn't be uh, eliminating, terminating uh, pregnancies because a child may be gay or have low intelligence or be deaf. Uh, should we leave these mm -hmm. other decisions up to just parents, what they want to do, and doctors, yeah. should there be a role for government? These are complicated issues uh, that we all need to start to uh, consider and educate ourselves about. And it's hard, as I said, because much of the genetic information is going to be uncertain. It's sure. going to be you have a 20 percent chance of autism, a 50 percent chance of this disease. Right. And if we know that, some people may say, that's too much for me. I don't want a wow. fetus who may develop breast cancer. Well, Others may say, sure, why not? Yeah, the responses have really run the gamut. You know, some finding it very fascinating, some very frightening. So, uh, Professor Robert Glitzman, thanks so much for bringing this to us. Appreciate it.